talk to you about Owen Hart. Oh. Work with Owen Hart a lot. Yeah. I want to yeah. Know. Wow. Um, at, at, you know, and again, as you, you know, you talk about Brett and you can't think about Brett without thinking about Owen. And then you think about the way Owen died that day. So we're in Kansas city and everything is normal. I'm going to wrestle Godfather that night. And they were walking through a couple things in the ring. Then at some point, like say five o'clock, I do the pre-taped interview with, with uh, the blue blazer. Um, that's in the can. So standing by earlier today, Kevin Kelly caught up with the blue blazer, wink, wink, and did the interview. But he, of course, was already up in the thing at that time. So I was watching the show down the hall in in uh, the TV locker room. And I, th- I, I know I was sitting there by myself. Um, so I watched the interview and then they cut and it's an awkward shot. The shot was supposed to be kind of like a spotlight on Owen up as he's starting to come down. And during the playing of the pre-tape, the last few seconds is when he fell. So I didn't know any of that. I couldn't hear any of that because I'm in this locker room. And then I, but I saw the odd wide shot. And then I thought technically went wrong. And then it became pandemonium. So I run out of the locker room, run down to Gorilla, and they didn't have, in the Kansas City arena, they didn't have, like we saw so many times, where you'd go up the steps to Gorilla. It was literally a table on this side of the curtain. And Bruce is on headset, and there's yelling and screaming, and people are trying to figure out what the hell, and they're trying to find somebody to, you know, the EMTs to go out and check on him. And Francois Petit, who was a uh, massage therapist guy, worked on a lot of the wrestlers. He went out there as well. Now, people are uh, uh, Terry Filippetti, who's one of the production assistants. She's like, stay here because we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to do it on camera. So just stay here. I'm like, OK. Um, and so they skip over owens match of course and the next element was me interviewing jeff jarrett and deborah before they wrestled val venus and uh uh, nicole bass i think and as i'm interviewing them and they of course are trying to hold back their tears the emts are wheeling owen past us and the one emt is giving you know chest compressions and it's like oh my god and now we're all you're while you're recording this is live live oh my god while we're live live and so you know jeff and owen of course were so close deborah as well and they're crying at this point i'm trying to hold it together and they go and do the match and where owen it's it's terrible um and and a lot is made about the decision to continue the show in that situation there was not time to think about not what do we do do we continue the show or not it's what's the next element well the next element is this okay do we have the people okay let's go and we do that we're not thinking of well what are the ramifications if we don't stop the show are people going to get upset if we call the show off and tell everybody to go home or the pay-per-view audience what are they going to think or how much money is the company going to lose no one thought of that no one was thinking about that they were thinking about my god owen and then they're thinking about okay what what do i have to do what what are my parts in the show i've got an interview coming up with jeff and deborah okay i know i got to do that and then after that then you start to uh process things and and trying to console people who are upset and by the time the main event got in the ring we that was when we realized that the ring was broken where owen had hit it was close to the corner and so they had to warn uh i think it was taker and steve in the main event and they had to warn them there hey listen there's a hole over the boards are broken um and that was like whoa just hearing them hearing somebody say that because then after that like everybody just stayed close to gorilla because we didn't know we were just all on standby everybody's on standby we're waiting to be told what to do. And wow. Um, 
yeah, it was a tragic day. Um, but, it, you know, and then, of course, then the next day we go from Kansas City to St. Louis and Mick Foley rode with me because Mick was riding with Owen. So Mick jumped in with me and Dr. Tom and we're just laughing and joking about Owen the whole time. And um, then I get to my hotel room in Kansas in St. Louis and it's like four o'clock in the morning and I put the TV on and the ABC News, local ABC News replay is talking about and I'm looking at my interview with the blue blazer. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and my wife calls me or I call her. And she's like, Oh my God, what happened? You know, I told her. So, um, but then you instantly, like once the grief process sort of goes, then, th but part of that is you, you just look at, you just think about all the fun you had with Owen and what a, uh, it, what, he was the, he was the worst. <laughs> he would sit there and he's constantly wetting his hair like all day. Um, and he would wet his hair like this with the spray bottle. And it, the water is just shooting over him on top of me, on top of whomever. I'm like, damn it, Owen. And uh, then uh, the fart spray. And uh, Davey, what did go? Oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't even there. It was Owen. You know, oh, it was, it was, they were a hoot. We just had such a good time with them. Um, and you're always being pulled into ribs. You're always like on guard because you're, you know, I don't want to get ribbed. I don't want to be a part of a rib, but you knew you were going to be Kevin, come here. I need you to do something. Oh, no. What? <laughs> so, yeah, it was just always it was always uh, just so much fun being around him and him and Davey. They were they were uh, class acts. And they, <laughs> I remember one time Al Snow and Mick Foley. And Davey and Owen were in a program and they were talking about who was the worst in their match. They were each trying to out worst the other. <laughs> so they were talking about the house show loop. They're, Kevin, you're the, are, you, you have to decide. I'm like, I, I didn't see the match. So they're describing to me what they did. Um, Owen said, I went for a leapfrog and I jumped two inches off the ground. <laughs> Um, Al was saying, I, tr I tripped on a, on a drop down, you know, they were just intentionally trying to have a stinker and I felt like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Those were just, they were just such great times and, uh, being able to remember all of that good, you know, in, in spite of the tragic ending and, and seeing, you know, how his kids are grown and, and, uh, how everybody has come to come to terms with what has happened never takes away the sense of loss or the tragedy but obviously it coming to coming to grips with all of it you can't help but remember all the fun you have with Owen Hart I remember one uh, one tv taping this is probably 93 94 there was a broken chair that Owen set up that when you sat in it you, you literally took a bump <laughs> to, the, to the floor so he would just set it up and just watch and wait so another guy would come in the room, sit in it, boom. Chief J, Str Chief J Strongball walks oh, over, Jesus. goes to sit in it, and Owen goes, no, wait, time out. <laughs> he stopped old Chief from taking a bump, but yeah, no one else was off limits. Yeah, everybody was going to uh, take a bump that night. Um, and I've <laughs> never, I never knew anybody else since then who ribbed to the extent that Owen did. But that was like such a part of the business. And you always, you know, so you as a, a uh, young, hopeful, up and comer, you're trying to not get heat and do whatever. And I'm trying to get a job and I'm, you know, getting, I'm getting ribbed or I'm about to get ribbed or whatever. And, uh, he didn't care. He didn't care at all. He called Vader in his hotel room, tell him he's something's wrong with his credit card. And, uh, you know, uh, uh there's nothing wrong with my credit card. Yeah. Well, you're just one of those fake wrestlers anyway. Why don't you come down here and do something about it? <laughs> And Vader come blowing down to the front desk, 400 pounds in a rage. Uh, it's just, you, you can't rib like that anymore either, too, with caller ID and cell phones. You know, nobody picks up the lobby phone anymore and calls a room. Nobody does that. You can't even make a prank call anymore. No, Once you can't have fun. You can't have fun in come, this life. Come to. <laughs> <laughs>